What's up guys, today we're going to be editing some more creative transitions and effects in Final Cut Pro. If you missed part one, then go and check out my previous video to this. Starting off with this zoom out transition. So here's my raw video clip for this. And the first thing I want to do is stabilize it to smooth out a bit. So let's select the video clip, go over here on the right hand side and go down to stabilization. And if we click this button here, Final Cut Pro will automatically stabilize it and smooth the video clip out. Next, I'm going to add some speed ramps to the video clip, get that speed up and slow down sort of effect. I want the beginning of the video clip to be fast and then to slow down here. So all we need to do is select the video clip, hold down shift and press B on the keyboard and this will create this little speed ramp here. And then if we move forward, I want the video clip to speed up again here. So hold down shift and press B. And then we can click on this drop down menu here and go to fast times eight is usually a good start. We can also click and drag this to speed it up. So if you wanted to do like a custom speed, then you can just click and drag. And then these tabs here, if we click and drag them out, it will smooth the transition between the two speeds. So now if I play that back, we have it fast at the beginning and then fast at the end. Now we want to create this transition through the painting on the wall. So to do that, let's first right click on the video clip and add it into a new compound clip. So adding it into a compound clip will lock in that stabilization. Next, I'm going to cut the first few frames of the video clip. And on the beginning part of the video clip, let's go to the magnetic mask tool here and go to add magnetic mask. And then just select the part that we want to transition through. And if you hold down option, you can click the parts that you don't want and then click analyze up here. And that will track the mask to the video just like that. And then we can click done up here and I'm going to click on this here and invert the mask. Now we can go to the crop tool over here, click crop and then click on Ken Burns here. And we want the red end box around the whole video. So if we click this button here, it will switch that red box to the outside. And this green box here, we can make small and fit it inside the mask we just made. And then right click and make sure ease in is selected and then click done. So now if I play that back, the video clip should zoom out from that mask. And if we copy and paste this layer, on the bottom layer, if we go up here and switch the mask, so invert the mask, and then go back to the crop tool and the start box here, if we move that up or to the side of the painting here and then click done. Now that will slide onto the screen and create this, create this zoom out transition. And that's a quick way to do it. I actually added a few steps and I animated the painting onto the screen. So if I drag this painting layer up and go over to the crop tool and just deselect that on the first frame, I'm going to press shift and H and this will create this hold frame here because I want to extend the first part of the video clip because we created this hold frame. The magnetic mask tool has disappeared. So, so if we click on that and just reset it and then add the mask again, so now that's fixed the mask and to animate the painting onto the screen, I use this animations effects pack. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out and we can just drag in some of these effects. And if I play that back, you'll see how it pops it onto the screen. We just need to go to the last frame and on the settings over here, if we go to end offset, just to change the end of the animation point, I'm going to change a few more of the settings here. I also added this rotate all effect, which will spin the painting like that. And then I changed the settings so that it flew on like this. Next, I added a shake effect for a bit of impact for when the painting goes into position. To add the shake effect, I first went to my titles tab and then I went to adjustment layer. I'll leave a link to this plugin in the description. It's a free download and we can drag that in to the video clip. And these are really useful because all of the effects we add to the adjustment layer will affect the video clips underneath. Then I use this bounce effect from the shake effects pack. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's a really good shake effects pack, which is fully customizable. So now we've made the transition. We can select all of these and drag them over our previous video clip. And now if I play this back, you can see how we've created that transition. Finally, if we go to the titles tab and then go to motion blur, 
we can add some motion blur over the top of this transition to smooth it out and make it look a bit nicer. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You can download the motion blur for free. The next few transitions are very similar without the zoom out effect where a part of the video clip pops onto the screen before the rest of the video clip. So if we copy and paste the video clip and on the top layer, you can either create a freeze frame or cut the video clip underneath. I like to add a freeze frame at the beginning. So if I select the top layer and then hold down shift and press H to create this freeze frame and then drag the video clip back so that the end of the video clips line up and then just trim the freeze frame slightly. And then let's select it, go to the magnetic mask tool and select the part of the video clip you want to pop onto the screen. And then we can click analyze up here and that will track the mask to the subject and then click done up here. And now we can animate this however we like. An easy way to do it is to go to the crop tool and select the Ken Burns effect and switch the end box. So the red end box is around the full video clip. And the start video box, we can kind of change, move it off the screen, right click, make sure ease in is selected, trim this video clip right back, and that will slide it into the video clip just like that. And you could also use the transform tool and add different keyframes to animate it onto the screen differently. The one that I made, I used the animations effects pack again, and I just added on a few different effects. So we have this pop in effect drag that onto the video clip, and then also a stretch effect. And then we can trim the video clip to match up the timing. But now this pops onto the screen and sort of jiggles around on the video clip. Now we can select both of these and drag them over our previous video clip, and then add some motion blur over this to smooth it out. Next up, we have this transition of the building dropping into screen. I'm going to cut the first few frames of the video clip. And on this first layer, we need to mask out the building. So let's go to the magnetic mask tool here and add the magnetic mask and then select the building. And if we hold down option and click the parts that we don't want, once we have the building masked out, then we can click analyze up here. And that will track the mask to the video. Then we can click done up here. So now we need to animate this onto the screen. I'm going to use the crop tool over here, click crop, click on Ken Burns and switch the end box so that it's around the whole of the video clip. And then on the green box, if we just drag this down underneath the building and right click, make sure ease in or linear is selected, click done. Now that building will come down from the top of the screen and to speed up the animation, we don't need to mess with keyframes. We just need to crop the video clip, extend the second half, and now that should come down a lot quicker. Next, I'm going to add in an adjustment layer and add a shake effect for when the building enters screen to add a bit of impact to the transition. Next, I added some of these explosion VFX and I'll leave a link to these in the description. I got them on Production Crate and there's a bunch of free downloads that you can get from there. All we need to do is just drag these onto the screen and then move them into position. And if you wanted to do a really quick and rough edit, then you can just crop these. And at the end, let's press Command T just to add a cross dissolve and just let them fade off of the screen. If you wanted to get really advanced and you can 3D track them using M Tracker 3D, which I used in my previous video clip. To add the explosion behind the building, what I had to do is create a copy of my video clip. And on the video clip, let's go to the magnetic mask tool, create a mask around the building and then click analyze to track it, click done up here, and then we can drag the explosion VFX in between these two layers and just move this up behind the building here. A bit of the explosion is showing underneath, so we need to go back and also track out the kind of bottom half of the video clip here and then click analyze. So now we have the explosion behind the building as well. So once we have that done, we can select all of the layers drag them over our previous video clip. So now if we play that back, we get the building dropping in from the top. The next effect is the speed ramp boomerang effect. What I'm going to do firstly is add a speed ramp to the video clip here. So hold down shift and press B. And then at the end, I'm going to add another speed ramp. So hold down shift and press B. 
And on this middle portion, we can speed this up by clicking and dragging. And I want to make this really fast. So as a quick change of direction. So now we get that fast movement to the next position. Now what we can do is copy and paste this video clip and just drag it over next to this one, right click and add it into a compound clip. And on this video clip, let's go here to the speed wheel and just go to reverse clip. So now that video clip will go one way and then it will reverse the other way. We can also trim this back. So if we trim this by six frames, then we need to trim this side by six frames too. Drag it over and it will create a faster boomerang effect. Finally, we need to add some color grading to this. First, by going up to the titles tab up here, going to adjustment layer and dragging in an adjustment layer over the top of all my video clips. And you can download this adjustment layer for free. I'll leave a link to it in the description. On this adjustment layer, if we go up to the T button, it has the custom LUT effect built into it, which is useful for the next step because I always add a LUT to the video clip. And on this one, I'm going to add this Summer Vibes LUT. I'll leave this LUT as a free download in the description. It's basically just a quick way to color grade your videos. Once you download it, you just need to click on the drop down menu and go to choose custom LUT and then just pick the one that you downloaded. Once I've added the LUT onto the video clip, then I will go through each video clip, select it, go to the color board here and change the basic exposure, saturation and color if I need to. I also use a histogram. So if we press command seven, that will bring up this histogram here and we can just use this to check the exposure is not too underexposed or overexposed. Finally, on this adjustment layer, I add the sharpen effect. And this is really good for social media, just to sharpen up the image and make them stand out a bit more on social media. You'll see if I turn that all the way up, it brings out a bunch of detail. I also like to use this diffusion effect, which adds a nice little glow to the highlights to give it a bit more of a cinematic look. And that is it for this video. In the next video, I'll be going through even more creative transitions and effects. So subscribe if you want to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.